good evening. And should I say cheers? It is actually evening. Nearly midnight. And I have with me a glass of golden jaggery laced white rum, which has been infusing with three or four Papua New Guinean vanilla beans for a few months now, if I already said that. And I can smell the vanilla coming off that, so cheers. Mmm. Perfect. I mean, that's overproof. Which you wouldn't guess. Plenty of ice helps. I've got my standby coffee. Match made in heaven. But tonight, I also have, amongst other things, with some Gorth and Hogarth brown rope number four rum. I think that's its name. But if I hold that there, you might be able to have a closer look. I guess you can see that. As you can see, it's a rope tobacco. And I have another piece here. As I ordered a sample of this. And as soon as I smoked it, I had to have more. As you can see, oh, I can get these lengths. I think they're approximately 20, 25 grams. 10 centimeter lengths locally. But this stuff is quite amazing. One second, I'll be back. Apologies for that minor interruption. Just another local wildlife. I don't know what they were doing. Loitering, lurking, watching, waiting. One second, I'll trip them. Oh, oh yeah. I think the light draws them in. <clears throat> anyway, what I had meant to say that you'll see I'm on the other side of the shed tonight. I have some very nautical rope tobacco here. It's a rum flavour. I think it's burly. May have some Virginia in it. Um, I don't know. I, I know it's good. Um, another sip of the rum. You can see the forge is looking a little bit forlorn. We're sort of coming into autumn here in the southern hemisphere. It's starting to cool down. I mean, I've been focused on boating and enjoying the waning months of warm weather. Not that it ever gets particularly cold in the subtropical climate I live in. But um, yeah, things will be rolling again soon. So in the spirit of all this nautical adventuring I'm doing, I'll be leaving oh, for a week to visit Fraser Island, which is the world's largest sand island, or Kagari as it's now known, which is the traditional Aboriginal uh, name for it. Um, you can call it whatever you want, it's just a sand island. Um, yeah, I'll probably endeavour to Maybe send a few, or post a few videos of that adventure. 
Uh, looking very forward to that. Um, but yeah, I recently purchased a sample of this and as I said, I instantly bought more. I mean, I hadn't smoked pipes. I mean, I, I had a bit of a hiatus for maybe you know, 18 months, 12 months. So I went through a bit of a phase. I, around about the time Dunhill, just before they disappeared from the market or changed production to Peterson, however you want to look at it. Um, yeah, I was trying to sample my way through some of the iconic and, well, less iconic, any tobaccos I could find, actually. Um, but I had one pipe of this and instantly... I was, well, I don't know how to put it exactly, but... Yes, it's rekindled my interest in pipe smoking. I mean, I, I didn't know tobaccos like this existed. I'd never tried. I, I'd smoke flakes and, I guess, round flakes, which I guess are ropes which have been sliced, but never a, such a, you know, rough and ready style of tobacco. Um, but, yeah, it's very tasty. And, you know, one of the things people complain about how hard it is to prepare these tobaccos. I mean, I have some here. I thought I'd get it out in the tray so it looks nice. Um, well, I didn't have a tray, so I just used a um, mess kit pan. Near enough, close enough. Uh, yeah, I pre-cut a few. I mean, it's, it comes quite moist. It's very tightly packed. You can probably see swirls of darker pieces of tobacco, I, I guess, when they case it with the rum. It's, um, you know, you get darker and lighter spots on the leaf. It doesn't smell of rum, it almost... This smells more like cold campfire ashes to me than any Latakia I've smelled. It has a... I can understand how people say a meaty smoky, almost a barbecue aroma to it. I guess there is an element of sweetness. But it also reminds me of some of the darker shag tobaccos, such as White Ox. I mean, the aroma to smoke sometimes to me, it's it's very, very similar. But much, much more pleasant than that. Anyway, the preparation is not that difficult. I mean, you take... I mean, I know I, I make knives and I, I use a $7 filleting knife, but you want a very sharp knife. I mean, blunt if you don't really care. I mean, it's not that hard to take a slice. I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I'm at the end of this, this section of rope, so it's actually a bit loose. As you can see, it's almost coming away as a, as a ribbon by itself. If, if I put this here, you can see, I mean, there's your... Oops, there goes another $2 worth of tobacco. No, I didn't really lose any. But that's you know, a very loose coin. I mean, that's a bit, you could just cut that again with a knife. But yeah, you end up with a, depending on how precise you want to be, a ribbon. Um, yeah, I, I think it's actually a pleasure to prepare. It's part of a ritual. So I put this out earlier, so I've been it's, it's raining again tonight. Still more of this late monsoonal instability and rain and humidity. So I've rubbed out, I don't know, there's more than I'm going to fit in my pipe tonight. I hate you. There's some coarse ribbon there. But you know, I'm, I'm not a purist on these things, even if that ends up in there, you know, half a roll. It's similar to fold and stuff, it's as long as you tamp. Judiciously, I guess it'll burn. I mean, I might you could, I'd tear some of those. So I'm going to put that back in this pouch so I don't lose it. And tonight, I'm smoking one of my favourite pipes. It's an older. Well, I can't say I know. A hell of a lot. It's a K Woody of London, it's marked. And I tried to do a bit of research 
on just what this pipe is, numbers and codes and whatnot. I mean, it's it doesn't look like a large pipe, but it has quite a large bowl. It's stamped with RJ, K Woody, made in London. Now, I'm assuming RJ, I haven't seen it listed on any of the uh, meagre data there is about K Woody pipes on the internet. I'm assuming RJ may be a reject. It has some fills and imperfections. I think the grain's quite nice. It has a lot of variation. But yeah, it smokes excellently. This was given to me by a friend. They picked it up at a local antique shop. And when I bought it, it probably, well, I didn't buy it when it was given to me. It was... Um, Probably half its capacity. I mean, it had some cake in it. I don't think whoever smoked this ever, ever reamed it. So I really just reamed it out, gave it a polish. I mean, that stem is chewed on. But the tenon is a bit loose. I mean, the, it's not too bad. But it smokes really well. I mean, this has had a lot of tobacco go through it over the years. And when I bought it, I bought when it was given to me, gifted to me, it, um, I don't know what was smoked in it. It's, it definitely didn't smell of the tarki, but I don't think it had been smoked for a long time. But it had a very pleasant aroma. But I'll shut up and drink some more rum. Ah, oh, that is awesome. And I'll pack this pipe. I mean, I'm not a purist on this either. I mean, three pinches. Uh, that, that's generally the technique I would follow. Not that I care about any real techniques. And I've done the Tampa Dilemma again. Nope. Nope. Apologies. Well. That's a bugger. Not good enough. You think I would have learnt my lesson by now? Well, I guess it's entirely possible to use the other end of this. How's that for some white little thinking? Aha. Oh my, cutlass. Oops. I brought my cutlass for the pirate theme. You might have guessed I do a bit of blade making. Alright, let's tamp. call that? Is that, a, is that a codger? The old codger stuff. Well, I suppose no matter what technique you follow, if you follow any technique, I'm, I'm going to put, I haven't really smoked this as medallion, so I'm going to throw some of that in there just for the hell of it. But as I was saying, you test the drawer, I mean, it's got to work, hasn't it? Hmm. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, another swig. Here's my most stylish herbal nymph lighter. An attempt to char. It's very humid here again tonight. This may take some effort. Oh, I found this herbal nymph lighter. The design wasn't the issue. The, I visited a small town called Gympie. It's about, I don't 
don't know, 200 kilometers from here. And they had quite an interesting selection of pipe appropriate lighters. I don't know if they really had these Brower pipes in mind, but oh well, it serves my purpose. medallion there took a little bit I guess that's one reason I always like to rub out a tobacco hmm, this chisel is quite a nice tamper I think that's an adequate char. Oh, for such a dark, strong smelling, strong looking tobacco, this has a an almost uncanny mildness to it. At least on the initial light. I find it does progress a little as it gets down the bowl. I mean, it does pick up. It's not a great transition in flavor, but it definitely gets stronger. Now, the first time I smoked this, I immediately thought to myself, this is like the mildest, not a dry cured cigar, the mildest, well I guess, I, I, I'm not really up on the cigar terminology, I mean I've smoked Cubans, Hondurans, Nicaraguans, the, um, the terminology escapes me, but it, 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 it was sort of in the realms of a very mild, um, one of those types of cigars, you know, I guess they're, I don't know, Central American style cigar. But having smoked it since then, I haven't experienced that again. There again with flavour perception and flavour memory. I think that's a clear cut case of me identifying a familiar flavour but one which I hadn't experienced in some time with one of those family implanted flavour memories. Another time I smoked it, I could have sworn I was smoking a white up cigarette. Well, not smoking it, but I could swear somebody was. That dark, rich, I guess it's Dutch, but also English style. The old shag rolling tobaccos. Yeah, it, it really reminded me of that on one night. And tonight, I'm just getting a mild Maybe the rum's countering things here. Very mild, smooth, not ashy at all. Just straight dark tobacco taste. It's, that's one thing I find about cigars. They, they leave an ashtray aftertaste in my mouth, which has its own appeal. But even the best cigars I smoke never, never compared to a tobacco like this. And I, you know, I, I can't review this 
not that I even review anything, but I can't review this fairly because I'm just completely taken with this. I mean, I can sit and analyze flavors and aromas and I don't know, induced thoughts. But the best thing I can probably say to you is if you have if you haven't smoked a tobacco like this, you should most definitely try it. I'm trying to get my hands on some of the unflavored variants and some of the black ropes. But the rum in this it's I mean I imagine it's just been moistened as they stretch and roll the leaf perhaps. With a probably just a rum. English Navy rum, perhaps. There's none, none of those artificial or very pronounced dundery fruity aromas that I find a lot of rum tobaccos tend to have. I mean, they're more akin to almost a port wine or a, a sherry, um, possibly even more a, a portillo, a very or a Lambrusco, a very sweet, uh, grapey, berry aroma. But I've, I've just lost track. I mean, this. First off. I think if there was only one tobacco I could ever smoke again, it would be this. You could take the rest away. Sure, it might be a little bit off-putting, it might be a little bit depressing even, but to take this away would be a true crime. I mean, this stuff has tradition, methodology. I mean, supposedly I don't know if it's the case anymore. It was produced on machinery that's hundreds of years old. And it shows, I mean, this is for something so simple to have stuck around for so long. It must hold some appeal. The most surprising thing to me is this. It's so smooth and light in the mouth. I, I don't think there's anything you could do to get a bite out of this. I mean, it confounds me. It makes no sense to me. But I mean, this is as rich as a, as a Latakia blend. It's, there's definitely a smoky element to it, but it doesn't have that creosote -y, I note that Latakia has that almost cedar, cypress-like aromatic wood oil that comes out in Latakias. I mean, I love that, but it can be a bit much. But as I said, I won't sing the praises of this anymore. I dissect it too, too far. One of my objectives in this, perhaps a little more fast paced, a little more direct, a little more less rambling and philosophical attempt to communicate with people. I would address one issue, which is the whole YouTube hype community issue. I mean, I, this channel it started out as a music channel. I mean, obviously, Anders Arisian is an absurd name. Perhaps not. Mm. No cleaners. I did smoke this a little wet. I should have dried it out more. I stuffed that cake in. I've got a bit of a gurgle. I mean, this... 
It says humid as anything. It's to be expected. It's not the fault of the tobacco. It's entirely my fault. My pack, you saw my pack. It was as rough as cuts. But anyway, to back to the issue at hand. The YouTube pipe community, YouTube pipe videos. This channel was initially a music channel. Um, I'm no gifted musician. I like music production and I play instruments. I mean, I think there might be one or two songs left on here. Um, and when I built the forge and started um, forging again, I thought I might share a little bit of knowledge. I mean, it's it's rough and ready, but. As much as anything else, it was in initially just a video diary for myself, a bit of a vlog. I mean, a few people might have found interest in it. And uh, the pipe tobacco video started as a bit of a joke. I mean, you know, I, I've been in a mad rush, you know, lives and dramas and preparing for deadlines I knew I'd never meet. Mm. Now she's burning. You know, all the things that you do to yourself because uh, life's too boring otherwise. So I just, you know, I, I had some urge to do something creative, to share some sort of communication, to put some sort of sense of community out there. I'm not a very social person at the best of times, and I live in a relatively isolated position, so, you know, I guess the internet's as good as any. But, I just thought I'd start posting some tobacco videos. I don't know how this whole YouTube pipe community thing functions. I mean, I've been watching people for years. Um, I think the first real encounter I had was uh, Matches860. I, I just watched, I mean, I was into pipe smoking. It was about the time I got this pipe. It was probably five or six years ago. I had smoked pipes previously, but that's that's a tangent. Um, oh, people like Bremen, pipe smoker. Uncle Phil, these are people I've been watching and perhaps harassing online <laughs> to some extent. But I mean, that's the fun in life, isn't it? You know what, social media, it is the internet after all. Who could you take seriously on the internet? I've been playing a bit of a character here and there, but the heart of it's truth. So I don't know if I've stepped on anyone's toes or offended anyone. I don't think that I would. I mean, the pipe community to me seems to be in a very accepting community. I mean, a shared love is what it's about to me. I don't care who you are or what you do. And I thought, you know, there's a bit of an alternative perspective here on pipe smoking. I mean, I love refinement in life. I love, you know, educated conversation, fine beverages, fine surroundings, art, music, all those things. But at the same time, you know, I thrive in an environment like this to, to, to have the facilities to create, to produce, make your own tools. You know, help people out, repair your own vehicles. I think it's an important thing. You know, dying arts as well. You know, keeping those alive. It's it's all part of our contribution to the sum total of human knowledge. I guess I'm trying my best. I mean, I don't particularly care for anything or any. Well, no, that's unfair. No, no, no. I don't not. I don't think I have a great legacy to leave, but you know, the best you can do is try. And, I mean, what better way to smoke a pipe and ramble? I, I could talk to the the lantern over there. I could talk to the welding mask, but it's not quite the same. Um, so, I mean, that's about as close as I'll get to an introduction to the YouTube pipe community. I've done a lot of things in my days Everything from industrial knife and cutter making, uh, horticulture, agriculture, forestry, silviculture, construction, motor mechanic. 
I guess, you know, life in a lot of ways is like a... an adventure through tobacco land. <laughs> In a short time I've been making YouTube pipe videos. I've had some fascinating conversations. Well, I'd be call online dialogue conversations. Met some interesting people, had more people engaged with anything I'm doing in this well, let's say backwater. Then previously, not that I ever sought that, as I said, it's a music channel that turned into a video diary, <clears throat> a place to share images and things I'm doing with friends and family. Um, I don't particularly know that anyone outside of that circle would care for it, but Definitely appreciated all the moments I've spent in contemplation watching YouTube pipe videos. So hopefully there's something in this for you. But my short, precise, poignant change of pace has probably turned into some drawling ramble. I mean, I'm going to rate this tobacco. Like, if you want, if you want a review, if you want a rating, I suppose I probably titled it some such thing. This is the pinnacle. <laughs> Five stars. Must smoke. I'll finish my roll. Another swig of coffee. I've done a little bit of philosophizing in the last few days. And I think this is what it's all about. But no matter who you are, no matter what you are, no matter what you think, if you share an interest, all the best to you. I'm going to be coming back soon. I have another secret here. I've been doing a bit more casing and blending. I have a sarsaparilla vanilla blend here, which I'll let you know about that later. But I, I think it might be something special. Take care. Excuse the silly shirt. Thank you all.